God is in his holy dwelling. He will give a home to the lonely. He gives power and strength to his people. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning. It's uh, good to see you all here in church this morning. Uh, we start with a bit of unfortunate news. Father Michael has COVID um, and uh, unfortunately, therefore, he can't be with us today. But we will be hearing from him because it was his turn to write a sermon and he rang me on Friday night and was very kind and emailed me his sermon over so I didn't have to spend my day off writing a sermon. And I've spoken to him uh, yesterday and um, he was okay. He's just got some very mild symptoms. Um, and I think, um, I think it's quite likely his, some of his family have contracted it as well, uh, as they were here last week. So. so we will be keeping Father Michael in our thoughts and prayers today. Uh, we'll be praying for him. And um, also we'll be thinking of all those who have been victims of the COVID pandemic. Um, and that will be my intention at Mass this morning. And so as we invite our Lord into our hearts and our minds, we spend a moment of quiet reflecting on the week past. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come before the Lord as sinners in the knowledge that forgiveness is always freely available. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oats of Mamre and said, how great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah and how grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, if I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, Abraham spoke to the Lord, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. And Abraham said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. The Lord answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. The Lord answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. The Lord answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe and not according to Christ. But in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells boldly. And you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him, in him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive altogether with him when he forgave us all our trespasses. Erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. Amen. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you, for everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish, or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, to, up to those who ask him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And so may I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So these are Father Michael's words. 
Prayer is a subject of keen interest to many people. It was one of the areas featured at the recent deanery workshop about confident discipleship. I suspect that most of us have some way to travel on the path of prayer. I heard a story about a bishop who commented that the best stock sections in the Christian bookshop were those headed evangelism and spirituality, and he didn't see much improvement in either area in the church at large. People of all faiths pray, and it's fair to assume that what they believe will affect the way they pray. Today's gospel begins with one of Jesus' disciples asking him to teach them to pray, as John the Baptist taught his disciples. It is a question that must have been asked of most Jewish rabbis. In response, Jesus gives his disciples the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. If we look at the prayer in our reading from St. Luke's Gospel, we see that there are bits missing compared to the version we generally use in church. It doesn't contain the lines, your will be done and deliver us from evil. And this, the reason is that there is a longer version of the Lord's Prayer in St. Matthew's Gospel, and that's the one that's almost always used in church worship. St. Matthew's version of the Lord's Prayer comes in the Sermon on the Mount, not as an answer to a question, but in the context of Jesus telling his followers not to heap up empty phrases, not to use many words like, pray like this, he says, and then he gives them the short prayer we know so well. We are so familiar with the Lord's Prayer that we can easily overlook its importance. It is forward-looking, expectant and urgent. So let's look at three lines in the prayer, things we ask God to do, petitions to use a posh word. Your kingdom come is a direct way of saying may your kingdom come or let your kingdom come. So much of Jesus's teaching is about the kingdom. At the beginning of his public ministry, St. Matthew has him preaching the gospel of the kingdom. St. Mark records him declaring, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And in St. Luke's gospel, he says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God for I was sent for this purpose. Many of his hearers would be thinking of an earthly kingdom ruled by a godly king of the house of David. When near the end of his life, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowds cry out, blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Now we know that this didn't happen and Christians have to think how else to understand the coming of God's kingdom. One way is to identify it with the final establishment of God's rule at the end of time. And another way is to see it as a calling for the church, whose members are to live in this world as God's subjects, citizens of heaven. The church is not perfect, so it shouldn't be identified with the kingdom, but it can experience the reality of the kingdom. It can try to be a community following God's way and sharing his life just as there is a bond between an earthly monarch and his or her people. There's a considerable overlap between the terms kingdom of God and eternal life. The Christian already has eternal life, even if its full realization lies in the future. It's interesting to think about St. Paul's description in today's reading from his letter to the Colossians of the life we have been given through Jesus' death and resurrection in which our baptisms are a participation, going down into the water and rising out of it, dying to sin and rising to new life. Paul writes, God made you alive together with Christ when he forgave us all our trespasses. And that last phrase takes us back to the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgiveness, one of the marks of the kingdom, something at the heart of the church's life, enables us to move on, to press forward, to break out of cycles of blame. Another forward-looking petition in the Lord's Prayer is give us each day our daily bread. At first sight, this seems just about the presence. But in Jesus' life and his teaching, 
simple everyday meals or grand feasts were signs of the kingdom. The poor and the rejected were accepted, the proud humbled or excluded. It suggests change in human society. And the simplicity of the request, a day's worth of bread, suggests provisions for people on the move. The third petition pointing us forward is the plea, do not bring us to the time of trial. And that, I think, conveys the sense of urgency better than the usual lead us into temptation or lead us not into temptation. Because we associate temptation with things like ice cream and cakes. They do test us, but Jesus is talking about the final testing of all things, God's separation of good from evil, the God who threatened destruction on the evil city of Sodom. The Lord's Prayer, therefore, is a prayer for people who want to join in God's work of changing the world. It is not a prayer for an easy life, but it expresses faith that the future belongs to God. It acknowledges that forgiving others enables us to receive God's forgiveness, not by changing him, but by changing us. And it challenges us to make our actions correspond to what we pray for. That will lead us forward on our paths of prayer more than anything else. Amen. And so we stand to declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church. We give thanks for the fact that we are part of a church that stretches to every corner of the earth, and we remember our brothers and sisters who are spread throughout the world. In our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we remember the church in Wales. We give thanks for the ministry and leadership of the church in that part of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Closer to home, we pray for our archbishops, for Bishop Matthew and Bishop Michael. And we pray for all bishops of the Anglican Communion as they gather for the Lambrinth Conference this week. We pray that 
the motions that are tabled there would lead to fruitful discussions about the development and unity of our church. Lord, in your mercy. In our own parish, we pray for Father Michael. We give thanks for his ministry and we pray for his healing and well being at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we remember before you those who have asked for our prayers, those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Joan Palmer, Russell, Jean Hodgkins, Father Timothy, Brenda, Jim Deacon, Claire, Ellie Parton, Betty Bourne, John, Ian, Peter, Andrew, Karen and Paul Johnson, Freddie Lambert, Norma, Jackie Davis, Peter Booth, Oliver and his family, Pam, Rita, Seth Taylor, Peggy King, Barry, David Priest, Gordon Smith, Rob Simnett, Amy Wright, Maureen Smithard, Janet Painter and Pat. Father, may they know your healing touch and may they be filled with your Holy Spirit. May it bring them a sense of your love and well-being. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for those who have gone before us. We remember those who are bereaved, who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we remember the recently dead. Marion Taylor, James Agnew, Sheila Heath, and Gladys Bold. We remember those whose year's mind occurs at this time. Martin Kilner, Edith Jones, Carl Richardson, and Ronald Drury. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Father, we join our prayers with the whole company of heaven and the Blessed Virgin as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Lord, receive these offerings chosen from your many gifts. May these mysteries make us holy and lead us to eternal joy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. <laughs> Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you our death. Rise. 
Accept to him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. As our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Because we will share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Body and blood of Christ.
Happy are those who show mercy, mercy shall be theirs. Happy are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom we offer you our souls, Lord, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Do please sit comfortably uh, for a moment for the notices. So I'm hoping that there's some coffee this week, because I think last week well, there wasn't, it was a bit of a boob. So yes, we have coffee. So please do join us for coffee uh, this morning. Um, there is going to be a public meeting about the future of St. Aidan's, and particularly the future of the, well, the building, really. Um, and that will go ahead as planned, which is at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow evening in Shovnall Community Centre. And um, there are some roadworks in Anslow, I believe, so you may need to uh, detour to get to it. 
There is a list for July at the back of the church to write the names of the sick, bereaved and departed for prayers. And please do use capital letters to help Father Michael uh, make out the exact spelling of names. Do pick up the second bulletin of the Benefice Planning Group if you haven't already done, done so. I think it's available at the back of church. And um, just a note that we are in holiday season, which means I think Father Michael is actually due to go on leave imminently. Um, but just a message that during the next month or so, um, if you leave any messages for clergy or the administrator or the church wardens or anybody really, every effort will be made to check uh, answer phones and messages and emails, but we might not always get back to you as quickly um, as we could. And if you're not sure, copy everybody into the email. That's what I always say. Right, I think that's it. We're going to sing our final hymn. Thank you. 